I found what Abu Nabas said. Right. So. But it's, it's, it's not saying what, I'm, what you're saying. Is it? You, you sure it's, the, it's that verse? Yeah. So let me just uh, bring it up. So you you read what you've. What? Okay. What's your name? Paperboy. Okay. No, I, I thought I saw you on YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I like your talks. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, so yeah, so here's the hadith. Is it a hadith or Ibn Abbas? No, no, just where it says, the messenger of uh, Ibn, <coughs> Ibn Abbas said, the messenger of Allah embraced me and said, oh Allah, teach him the wisdom and the correct interpretation of the book. Oh yeah, I agree, yeah, Ibn Abbas, of course. So, but the whale thing, where where'd you get it? Yeah, so you said, Okay. Oh no, you don't have to convince me how great about Ibn Abbas. So, from his tafsir, 68 1, that's the pen. Yeah. And from his narration on the authenticity of Ibn Abbas, he said, regarding the interpretation of Allah saying, Nun, he says he swears by the Nun, which is the whale that carries the earth on its back while in water, and beneath which is the bull, and under the bull is the rock, and under the rock is the dust, and no one knows what is under the dust save Allah. Wait, so that's not, that's not, so that's, that's essentially, not the verse you gave me though. Yeah, 68 1. So there's the earth, there's the whale, and there's the, there's the whale, there's the bull, and then. No one, no one, what color name is it? 68 1. Because remember, it's the tafsir of 68 1, nun by the pen. Because they asked, what is nun? Ah, ah you, you sent me to another one. Or maybe I misheard, I don't know. I, anywho. Okay, so let me read. Um, what does it say? Oh, Ibn Abbas, okay, you said it. Let me just read one second. So the question is, do you agree with Ibn Abbas, who was the Inca of the Ummah, and your Prophet prayed for him? And I, I don't know any time that Allah did not respond to Muhammad's requests. No, no. Mm. See the thing is, Ibn Abbas, let me, I'm not saying, let me, I need to first understand it, what Ibn Abbas is saying here. Mm. But what I would say is, mm. um, is Ibn Abbas is not an errant. Ah, that, he's not an errant. To, I'm not rejecting this. But I just, <laughs> That's before what, I understand. Before, when, when, it, when it's something you like, you will say, yeah, Ibn Abbas is on the, on the, on the, on the hack. But when you see something as absurd, as the world being on a whale's back, then it's oh he's not he's not the prophet. He, that's why why did your prophet pray for him? And, it, and this is why the the Sahaba looked up to his opinion, and he was one of the most learned and influential within the Sahaba. So how did he get that so wrong? So you should take should take the interpretation of Ibn Abbas. Yeah. Yeah, he was known as the Sea of Knowledge and one of the early Quran scholars. Why are you trying to convince me of Abbas? <laughs> well, I'm told you don't have to convince you. Ah, uh, no, I'm just. Uh, adding that in there. And this is, I just, 
Islam web so it says once he grew up he became the most knowledgeable about the tafsir of the Quran and the rulings of the purified Sunnah people came to him from everywhere to learn the rulings of the religion at his hands and oh yeah so and also uh, this so Abu Nu Aim in his work Hulia quotes Ibn Umar as saying the Prophet prayed for Ibn Abbas thus O oh God bless him and disperse his teaching in addition he said narrated from Abdullah Mumin bin Khalid from Abdullah Allah bin Bereda that Ibn Abbas said I got the I got to the Prophet when Gabriel who was also present had this to say about me he is destined to be the scholar of this community so advise him well so I'm just adding more layers as to what when you're saying well he's not infallible because we have the prayer and we have even Jibril at the same time saying he is destined to become the scholar of this community but then when people realize some of the things that Ibn Abbas said then they want to throw him under the bus so this is why you know you also have your faculties and if this is what the uh, the scholar of the Salafs is saying here's the door Islam is here and you should see yourself through it because clearly like no one can take this as a serious no no we, we, it needs more research sometimes the, the, the sayings like they, they've taken you don't take them in a vacuum there's like a methodology to understand what everyone says so I take it Ibn, Ibn Abbas said that it's fine mm. I'm not so what is the interpretation of the earth being on the world's that's back take, that's going to take a while to I'm, that's going to take a while to <laughs> get to the bottom of to be fair. I think it's very clear as to no, no, trust me, man. <laughs> what the meaning of that is oh trust me there's a lot of sometimes for example with these sayings they might be like it's, there's a lot of Israeli yeah, had some some things that are narrated there is i don't know how to explain it basically but mm. i take it it's, it's daif it. no it's not daif no. from what i saw it's not so already that's, it's not daif however like i said there is i'll come back to you on it fair mm. enough no problem you got something else um What's your opinion on the the Quran and the different kid art? Well, Yo, guys, my opinion is guys, uh, listen, uh, that the Quran was inspired on seven on seven kid mm -hmm. seven letters. And you believe it's been perfectly preserved? Yeah. yeah. So I guess my question is because we see like within Islamic literature that there's been like many changes to the Quran since the time of your prophet so there'll be words and verses that were within the Quran that were within the Sahaba such as Ibn Masud Ibn Masud however you say it Masud um, which caused conflict so wouldn't that indicate that there wasn't a perfect preser preservation and that there was actually a lot of human intervention in terms of the compilation of the Quran well, well, first of all, you have first of all you have most of the Sahaba agreed, affirmed the Quran, the the, the what the production of the Quran. They agreed on on what he did. Apart Except, from apart from Ibn Masud, who later came along right. and he accepted it. So now, according to your Prophet in the Hadith, did he did he say the prophet one of the people the four, the right? The four, and one of them was on the committee with uh, Ibn. So was one of the four Ibn Masud. One of the four on the committee wasn't even a soul, but it was Ubay ibn Kaab, who the prophet also vouched for. Right. So if, if the prophet vouched for four, right? Four people. What, and one of them was Ibn Masood. One of them was Ibn Masood, and one of them was Ubay ibn Kaab. Ubay ibn Kaab was on the committee of the Quran of Uthman. Mm -hmm. So already we have someone from the committee. We have Zayd ibn Thabit, who witnessed what we call like the last revelation, as in he, he, he saw the Quran at his final form of everything that's Well, that's happened. not true, because when Muhammad. So when Uthman compiled the Quran, he got it from people from sticks and stones and people who had written it yeah, in different places. So he didn't go to Zaid and say, recite what you had learned. Because even before that, um, 
Zaid is a witness, yeah. But even before that, Hafsa had her own copy of uh, had her own codex. Yeah, and Uthman took that one. But then you're saying, but you're saying, so why did he burn it and re, re, recreate it if that was the final version? Or I if, don't know if he burned it. Yeah, it was burned, and it was recompiled. No, no he took it and then he used it and then he gave it back because he swore an oath to give it back. Okay. Even before I ask, like going to that, I have another question yeah. to, to go back. Because if Ibn Zaid was the one who revealed, who saw the Quran in its, final, in its yeah. full final um, form, then why would, why isn't the verse of stoning in the Quran? Because it was abrogated. No, because Uthman said that there were not two witnesses for it. Because remember, every verse had to have two witnesses for it to be in the compilation. Yeah, of course, yeah. So then if you're saying Zaid had the full revelation, then that contradicts the fact that they needed two witnesses, because they, they would have needed two witnesses with Ibn Zaid, who witnessed the final revelation, because the criteria for the verses to be in, that's why they abrogated the text, but not the ruling. And the, the comment was that he didn't have he didn't want to be accused of something because there wasn't... A, he didn't want to be accused of putting something in the Quran because he didn't have a second witness. Well, well first of all, we have Omar, for example, first of all, that mm. is before Uthman, and You're he right. vouched for the abrogation of the verse of the stone. And he said, if people... I would put the verse back if it wasn't for people to say that Omar put something back in the Book of Allah that we had no authority right. to put. Right. So before the time of Uthman, the verse was abrogated. It was abrogated. The verse it was abrogated like a recitation, but it wasn't abrogated. The ruling wasn't abrogated. Whereas even when it comes to the time of Uthman later, it stays the same thing. So, so, I don't, so I'm Uthman saying, say, does Uthman say that the reason this word is not found is because we, we didn't find two witnesses? Yes. Let does me he, see if I have the. Um, because before evidence. Uthman, people even, it was acknowledged before the time of Uthman. Well, this is what I'm saying. So it seems to contradict the fact that you said. Zaid was given the final reading and if Zaid was given the final reading yeah. Zaid wasn't one of the four that your prophet said learn the Quran from yeah but he was young and he was a Hafiz but this is what I'm saying how can he be the one who was <laughs> how can he be the one that learnt the final Quran when your prophet gave instruction to learn the Quran from four other people we got one of them on the committee, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm saying you said Zaid was there when he saw the final revelation. Yeah. So were the others there when they, with the final revelation too? I don't know about that. I genuinely don't know. So then, so why would your prophet then say learn the Quran from those four? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe first of all, at that specific time. And secondly... You see, this is why Yasser Kadir said there's holes in the standard narrative. Because even you know these are simple questions, but it would seem odd that if Jibril revised the Quran with Muhammad several times after, um, what was it? Um, was it Ramadan? Yeah. Yeah, several times, and left the, the Umar with a com fully compiled version, then it seems that odd that he would say, learn the Quran from these four people. Then he went to, then Uthman went to Ibn Zayd and then Ibn Masood even had a disagreement about him saying when I learnt the Quran you were still in a little boy essentially. Yeah. So the narrative doesn't seem to add up and especially if you add in the fact that when they did recompile the Quran because if, if Hafsa had a finalised Quran they wouldn't have brought people who had their sticks and stones with the Quran written on parchment leaves and, and compiled it and also, which I'm trying to find, yeah, but, stating that you needed two witnesses for the verses to be uh, yeah, but accounted that's for. for. That, that's, that's for that's for, uh, for responsibility because you can't, even though they, they could have personally just written down what they know, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't be justice because... So who knew? Because as well, one of the reasons why they wrote down the Quran was, if it was in its final form, it was because of the battle of Yamama against Musleima. Yeah. Musleima, where Muslima. lots of the Qur'a died. So either many had memorized it or you had one copy. If you had it written down, yeah. then it wouldn't have got lost in the battle. 
No, the, the, the copy, there, I don't think, and I'm not aware of any copy that was lost in the battle. No, I'm but saying, I'm of, like, no, there's yeah. There's a lot of people who have memorizers. Who but I thought it was a, Uthman, U U Umar had a written codex, which was the what final one that was no, no, revealed. Abu Bakr had a written codex. Yeah, sorry, Abu Bakr. Yeah, and it was with Fatima, and Uthman right. used it for his... So then why was he, wor why did he say, I'm worried that we will lose the Quran in the battle because many of the Quran, or the reciters died, and that we need to compile it if Abu Bakr already had one. Oh, okay. Well, recitation, first of all, because without their critical marks. Yeah, but Abu Bakr already had a. Yeah, but you don't have their critical marks in there. So you're saying Uthman recompiled just to add the diacritical mark? Because he sent it out without the diacritical marks. I think he just tried to do what is best in his eyes. <laughs> but and that's what I'm saying. Does it make sense that. I've got, I'm Abu Bakr, I have a copy. Yeah. There's a battle over there with the Hafiz or whatever, who apparently memorized different parts of the Quran. Yeah. And they died. And then Uthman has said, let's compile the Quran because you're afraid that the Quran will be lost. Yeah. But you already have a copy here. Yeah, but look, the man did what he's best in his eyes. He took yeah, but the, that, he took I'm saying, the, does that make he took sense? The codex, he took the codex that Abu Bakr had already done right. and he used it to compile his codex as well. And he, and he used the same committee. But so I'm saying, why would you... Say, if the codex co is Fatima. Was it Fati Hafs? It was Hafs, Hafs's mm. codex. He's not going to take and say, oh, sorry, because it was her own. So he took it to use it, but then he gave it back. So I don't see the... Yeah, but I'm saying, why would you say, let's compile the Quran if it's already compiled? Oh, okay, okay, I understand what you mean now. Yeah, because it was... Oh, okay, I understand, I understand what you mean now. I think the answer to that is because the spreading of the Islam was happening very quickly. He needed a copy in each place. So you just... You so you just copy Abu Bakr's one multiple times? Because he said specifically, I will fear that the Quran will be lost, so let's write it down. But I'm saying there was a already compiled one because that's why I asked you, who was there when Muhammad gave the full final revelation of the Quran in all the seven different modes? Yeah. If it was Ibn Zayd, then if people are dying, he wouldn't have had to worry because you had Ibn Zayd, you also had the Abu Bakr's version and also the four who he said learn the Quran is not immortal. Yeah, but then yeah. you had it written down. So why would you compile something that was already compiled? I don't know. I think he just did what was best in his eyes, man. I don't know what to tell you. Well, does that make sense know. is what I'm asking you. It makes sense to him. But not to you. It makes sense to me. I see. I okay, see. explain what. He used, he used, yeah. all I can say is that he used Abu Bakr's <laughs> codex. <laughs> He used it, and that's all I can say. Honestly, I don't know what to tell you. Though. Yeah, but I'm saying, why would you say let's compile the Quran if it was already compiled? I think he meant in those specific areas. Like he compiled it to erase the confusion in, the, in those specific areas. Mm. And we also, and we also have, yeah, go on. No, I understand your questions, honestly, mm. but that's all I, I, I. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. The Islamic narrative. Well, that's all I'm highlighting is that it's very contradictory and it doesn't make sense because if Muhammad gave, for example, the, the final sermon, there was supposed to be loads and loads of people there. Yeah. So if Muhammad has finalized the Islam, because in the Quran it says, this day I've made your religion perfect for you. Yeah. And he's gone through it after Ramadan with <laughs> Jibril to and make sure there are no back. mistakes. Like there had to be some people that he gave the recitation to that held it so if they had the final version then it would have had it would have had to have included the four because you wouldn't say learn the quran from people that didn't have the final version oh yeah uh, i'm not I, sure if does that make sense Because me personally, like, I'm aware of the reasons why he, Uthman used Zayd ibn Kaab. I understand the reasons why he used him. I okay. understand why he got one of the four that the Prophet vouched for on the committee. So I understand both of those choices. Yeah, but if, if he had, if Muhammad had left the perfected Quran, then why is he go going against Muhammad's last revelation to compile it? If Muhammad did that already. Because this is what he said, and this is Abu, Ib, uh, Abu Dawood. It says, we have, informed, we have been informed 
that much of the Quran has been had been revealed, but those who knew it were killed at Yamama. They had preserved it, and it was never known or written after them. Can you read that again, sorry? Okay, so this is in Bukhari. I'll start with Bukhari. Yeah. It says, Umar came to me and said, casualties were heavy among, among the Qura of the Quran. On the day of the battle of Yamama, and I am afraid that more heavy casualties may take place among the, among the Qura on the battlefield, whether by large part of the Quran may be lost. Therefore, I suggest you, Abu Bakr, order that the Quran be collected. So then, oh, sure. we, so, I wasn't aware of this many cameras, man. <laughs> you, you look up and, uh, I wasn't aware, man. So, I'll give you another you report. I, I, well, I say you look, you look down, you look up and, um, they come out of nowhere. So, uh, this is, um, Ahmed Hanbal and he says so another quote says we have been informed that much of the Quran has been had been revealed but those who knew it were killed at Yamama they had preserved it and it was it was never known or written after them and this is um, works that can be found in I think Al Sayyuti so now does that statement go with the claim that Muhammad finalized the Quran and it had left it with a choice of his closest companions Which one is that? So there's the uh, Abu Bakr one. That's in Bukhari. Yeah. And this one uh, is in. Thought it was already the one across the Quran. In the day of Basit Yamama, and I am afraid that more happy casualties may take place around the Quran, and that means we have a large part of the Quran in the world. Therefore, I suggest to you all the other Quran to collect. Okay, so that's the first collection. Right. The first but then, if Muhammad had already given a final revelation to someone yeah. why would you then fear, fear that it needs to be compiled because there should be have been he, for example he can die he can okay so now if i find for example where it talks about the two two witnesses then that would go against because they'll say i was there at the final revelation muhammad revealed it to me and if the quran is so eloquent you wouldn't be able to fabricate a verse yeah. You wouldn't need two witnesses because the proof would be the eloquence of the Quran in itself. Because if you can't copy the Quran, why would you need two witnesses to verify that it was from the Prophet? Well, first of all, mm. abrogation. Secondly, would you abrogation? Yeah, so for, like the verse of Stolen as a basic example, mm. like someone could bring the verse of Stolen. But if you don't have two witnesses, then it might have been like just an abrogated verse that you were not aware that it was abrogated. That's but here's the problem, and here's, here's even a problem with the Islamic narrative of the verse of abrogation, because it's supposed to, well, it does apply to rulings, but according to the Quran, it says it's supposed to be replaced with something better. So when a verse is abrogated, it's replaced with something else. Was something like it all that? So what was the something yeah. like it that was revealed in its place? Well, I'm not, I'm not aware specifically in place of that specific one. But that's what I'm saying. So you, what you've been fed is a, a, a stories which you've not questioned. But when it's put to you and you think about it, it doesn't make sense because even Allah's own very testament was that we replace it with something similar or something better. Yeah. So why would you abrogate the, the, the text, but not the ruling, but then if it's abrogated, it should be, it, it doesn't make sense. Why you would abrogate the text? What I think happened is that people knew that there was a punishment for stoning. And because they required two witnesses, and they could only get one witness, they knew it was a ruling that had been carried out, so they kept it. But because of the, the requirement for two witnesses, they didn't put it in the text, but they kept the ruling. Uh, the, reason, like I said, the reason I wouldn't be on board with that is just mm. because of the reports we have in the time of Umar that he gave his own testimony. 
I will bail that one. Well, yeah, he gave it. What does he say? He says, um, he says, Allah revealed the verse of stone, then. and if it wasn't for people, if, if I didn't fear that people would say, Umar added something to the book of Allah that he had no authority to, I would add it in the Quran. Right. So he had authority he, that he didn't have the authority because it's based on the two witnesses. No, that was Uthman in Uthman's time. Yeah, so say that verse, that, say what you said again. Umar said, if, yeah. if I, I did not, the verses of stone and were revealed in the time of the Prophet and you, we knew them and memorized them. Right. And if I wasn't scared that people would say that I added, Umar added something to the book of Allah that he had no authority to, I would right. add it again. So where does it Meaning, say it was abrogated? He ignores the abrogation. It's that's not, that's not, <laughs> that's that not, report no. report literally ignores no. the abrogation. No, you know, the, the, that, the that rule proves of my point. The rule of two yeah. witnesses, was that given by the Prophet or it was a personal effort from Quran? Which yeah, was that was a that wasn't given by Muhammad. Yeah, it was a personal effort by Uthman. Exactly. So you can't apply the personal effort of Uthman to Omar and say he did not do it because he had he didn't have. To so this it. is the thing. So why would Uthman make a criteria that Muhammad didn't make? Because, because this is why I was saying. Remember how how does that go? Because what you should show me is that the Muhammad's final re revelation of the perfected Quran. Yeah. He explained to someone that this is now being abrogated but the ruling is being stayed, is being kept because he would have been the one who revealed the final version without that verse in it yeah. so how would it then come later on that Uthman is taking it upon himself and it's not a criteria that was established by Muhammad yeah because, because first of all the, the process of witnesses established that the Prophet, the prophet himself like heavily relied on because yeah but he just... gave a final revelation and he said learn the Quran from the four yeah so they should have had already the full revelation Which that they could have talked to people but then it was Uthman who made the, the criteria not well, one Uthman. of the four no no because they would have said this is not in our recitation because the prophet never taught it to us because it's abrogated apart from the ruling wait say that again so if Muhammad had taught them yeah. that the verse was not to be in the Quran anymore yeah. but the ruling should be kept yeah. it should have been one of those four who raised that point to tell everyone hey guys well they approved it didn't they did they Zaid had been did, you so, have so, exactly Zaid Zaid and Ubay and how many chapters in the Quran did Ubay have 112 no was it 116 116 then why did he do one with 112? 12? No, it was 100. Yeah, 112 then. Sorry. He, the, so what we have now is 112. No, 114. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So he had 112. He had 112. So, yeah, so he wasn't aware of two. That actually proves the point. But this is goes again. If the prophet said learn the Quran from Ubay ibn Kaab as one of the people, yeah. And he witnessed the final revelation of the Quran. Um, did, why would he? Why, did he? Well, I'm asking who was who was the person who witnessed the final revelation? Because you said Muhammad went through it with Jibril. Yeah. So clearly, it would have been taught to someone. Yeah, of course. So Zayd I'm just. was one. Zayd, 100, was one of the. No, because people. that's why he had a dispute with uh, Ibn you know, Masud. You know, I know for a fact that Zayd had witnessed that the final revelation. Uh, but let me just get the names of everyone who. Okay. Because as well, um, okay, so okay, so here's this should, this should give us an answer, okay. Uh, oh, come on, look how tiny it is now. I have to zoom, but when I zoom, it doesn't scroll. Oh, maybe turn it? your phone sideways. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, so the final revelation is when Jibril showed the Quran to the Prophet on his okay. final form. Okay. Right. It was right from the authority of Aisha that the Prophet said uh, that, the, that Gibriel would, give, would show him the final uh, version of the Quran every right. year, uh -huh. one or twice a year, mm -hmm. and that he gave him now twice. Mm -hmm. So the final I see myself, recension. And I see myself, yeah, and I see myself dying soon. So, so just before Allah. he died, okay. yeah. 
So this is one. Another report in Bukhari says. So who did he teach that final recension to? I think that's what, what we're coming to. So that's the first one. It just I think this one just explains the concept of it. Okay. This report says. Now, actually, actually, go okay, on and say. Actually, it. this yeah. report just is like is, is a reiteration of the first one. Okay. And then it says, and the one who witnessed this one from the Sahaba is Ibn Masud and Zayd ibn Thabit. So okay, so Ibn Masud and Zayd ibn Thabit. So yeah. now we've got evidence here that Ibn Masud is one. So now, if Ibn Masud had to give up his codex, why would that be possible if he was one of the people that witnessed the final recension? Right, so you have Ibn Masud and Zayd ibn Thabit, who were the two at that one, at the last... So all I'm highlighting is there's contradictory information in the Islamic sources. Because if they were both witnessed it, they wouldn't have both disagreed. And Uthman would have had no right to then take Ibn Masood's codex because if man was doing something Muhammad had not done himself. And also, let me just add one other thing whilst you're pondering. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Yeah. And it says Aisha reported that it had been revealed in the Holy Quran that 10 clear sucklings make the marriage unlawful. Then it was abrogated. You see, abrogation, whereas the other ones, the rulings, there was no mention of abrogation. Yeah, but it says. Different types of abrogation. Then it says, then it was abrogated and substituted by five sucklings, and Allah's apostle died. And it was before that time found in the Holy Quran and recited by the Muslims. Now we don't find that verse in the Quran anymore. Yeah. So the question would be, what happened to it? It's abrogated. No, it wasn't. It said the verse of 10 was abrogated with five. So then the five was in the Quran at the time he died. What does it say in the time he dies? Yeah, so look, the 10 clear sucklings make the marriage lawful. Then it was abrogated by five and Allah's apostle died and it was before that time found in the Holy Quran and recited by the Muslims. So I'm just saying you've just read that Muhammad gave a final recension of the Quran. So this verse should have been in that final recension. But we don't find it anymore. What's that? And you can't accuse me of twisting the meaning because it's very clear of what's been said. All right, let me just find one thing really quickly. No problem. Okay, so this is what they say, right? And what Aisha said, that the Prophet died and these are still being recited, it means that the abrogation with five succulents was very late. That even when the Prophet died, some people were still reciting them, not aware that it has been abrogated. So now, here's the problem again. We go back to, we see the 10 was replaced by something better, yeah. five succulents. What was the five replaced by? Something similar or something better. And two, if that is to be true, we would need a Mutawatir report from the companions to say that there was an abrogation because what it seems is a lot of the scholars like to invent their own explanation to make it flow but there's no evidence that it's based upon because what are, where are the reports? You know that, where the Tawatir starts from? Where? Like on the lowest 
So you have us here and you have the Sahaba here. Right. Where does the Tawata have to come from? What's the lowest school, like floor? So the Tawata is Sahabi, mm -hmm. one from the person from the Sahaba. Right. That's counted as authentic purely. And then it goes, you have to have Tawata from the Tabaqa the Satyrs. Right. So if you have one Sahabi or you have. Do you have one Sahabi that affirms that? Zayd the Thabit, the, the committee. No, where he said that the five sucklings was abrogated. Oh, we don't have to have the report because he compiled, he compiled his, he compiled his codex. So we don't have to, he doesn't have to say, oh guys, this has, has been abrogated. We just look at his copy and we don't find it. So we know that's his opinion. Well, or, it, that's what he's, that's or what he it went missing because that's why, as we see with the Battle of Yamama and people were dying, that verses were going missing. And we can also see within Ibn Masu's codex, there were different verses and different um, that we don't have in the Quran today. So this is why the question is, if we go by the report that you said, and it said Ibn Masud is one of the people, we wouldn't have that conflict between them because they both would have been aware that they both had the final two, even though was your prophet said- Was there a conflict among the verses of the Sakhlin? Not regarding the suckling, but yeah, in terms so of, we that's two different things. So with the verse of the suckling, there's no evidence. You're just saying, well, because it was Ibn, T Ibn Zaid was there, therefore it was abrogated. So I'm asking, well. what is the evidence? Because as we said, the verse is normally re replaced by something better or similar as a, stated by Allah. That's what the Quran says. So where was, because that's yeah, why it says yeah, no. there was 10 sucklings and it was replaced by something similar which was five sucklings so what was the similar verse that was revealed and this is why when you look at the narrative and this is why people say there's holes in the Islamic narrative because it doesn't make sense you're saying learn from the two your prophet said learn from the four then from the two they were disputing from each other Ibn Masood didn't want to give his codex and even a hundred years after his death his uh, students were still using his uh, codex but Ibn Masood, as you're aware, he said for the sake of the unity of the Umar, he will go with the recent Uthman's version. But why would Uthman do what your prophet hadn't done? Because you're, as you are saying, he went through every year with Jibril. Apparently no one saw, but the, he went through it twice in the final year. So let's say if we assume that the final two people were Ibn Masood and Zayd, then why would Ibn Zayd have a clash with this man about it. He should have said, hey, the prophet said, learn the Quran from me. I was there with the final recent recension. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. You know what, it's a good one. I'll go see more onto that. No and problem. Back there, Next right? time you're here. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so just to do a quick um, wrap up, we clearly see that this nice young gentleman was clearly stumped about the contradictory evidence within the Quran's compilation. But at first this conversation started off because he said he is a Salaf and he goes by the interpretation of the Salaf. And I showed him, well, Muhammad prayed for uh, Ibn Abbas to be the ink of the Umar. And we even see uh, the statement where Jibreel said that Ibn Abbas will become the most knowledgeable within the community but then yet when we see Ibn Abbas he said that the interpretation of Nun by the pen was that the earth was on a whale's back but because people now have science they reject this but before they wouldn't have had a problem with it no one would have said hey you're crazy how can the, the world be on a whale's back but now we have you know scientific knowledge we know that's not true and it debunks the Quran then we move into the compilation of the Quran and we see the clearly contradictory narrations of where it says Muhammad went through the Quran twice uh, in one year for the final recension but then it was compiled because the Quran were being killed but then Muhammad said learn the Quran from the four so why did they have a dispute between Ibn uh, Zaid and Ibn Masood, if Muhammad said, if these were the people that saw the two final, fully compiled, clear revelations from Muhammad. So the more we go into the sources, 
the more we see there's contradictory and conflicting evidence. So on that note, paper boy out. <laughs>